Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to another Tumblr tutorial. If it's your first time here, hi, my name is Mel and I make Tumblr tutorials here on YouTube. I am so excited about today's video. In today's tutorial, we are going to make a double reverse ombre peekaboo tumbler. I haven't been able to come up with a like super cool or catchy name for this design, um, but I really, really love this technique. I have had so much fun playing around with it, and I really hope that you guys enjoy the tutorial. If you want to follow along with this tutorial and remake this design, I will have a full supply list down below in the description box for you, along with some discount codes and links to all of my social media pages, as well as my Facebook group and my exclusive mentorship group, MBMM Elite. If you enjoy the tutorial, make sure that you hit the thumbs up button down below. It really helps the channel out. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well so you don't miss any of my new videos. Okay, I think that's it. I really hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Let's go. All right, we are going to get started with a 30 ounce traditional tumbler from Craft Haven. I'm gonna sand it down really well and then we're gonna wipe it down with some rubbing alcohol to clean off all of that sanding residue and make sure that we are ready for base paint and glitter. When I base paint my tumbler, I'm going to think about the order in which I want my outer glitter layer to go. So I kind of made myself a little cheat sheet here. We are going to start with the white on the top for our glitter, then move down into our silver, gold, bronze, brown, and then black. Because when we look at the finished product, I want the colors to be reversed. So I want the black on the top. Hopefully that makes sense. I just spray painted my cup outside, let it dry for about 30 minutes. And now I'm applying a very, very, very thin layer of epoxy to my tumbler so that we can apply our glitter. All right, so we've got our epoxy coat on our tumbler and we're ready to go in with our first ombre. So we're gonna just start with our darkest, chunkiest, and we're gonna work our way up to the lightest color. So for my black chunky, I'm using Johnny from Peachy Olive Glitters. And I'm gonna go really, really light with this first pass. Just kind of like that, very, very light. With our chunkies, what we're aiming to do here is one, build up some dimension in our colors, and two, build kind of a roadmap for the fine cuts and the blend. So don't go super heavy with your darks. We are gonna go back in with them a second time to build up the coverage. So just go super light this first round. For the brown color, I'm gonna use Venti. And I'm doing the same thing. You can see how high I'm holding my shaker because I really just want that glitter to kind of naturally fall, but also again, fall really, really lightly. You can see how light that coverage is. For our bronze color, the chunky I'm using is Vintage. Now Vintage is actually a mix that has some fine cuts in it. So it's gonna give us a little bit more coverage than just a straight plain chunky wood, but that's okay. You can see it there. For our gold, of course, we're using my favorite gold, which is Athena. For the chunky silver, we're gonna use 40 cow. Now, one thing I like to do when I'm doing my ombres and my blends is hold my cup, my shaker, not only really high, but also constantly move my cup. So you'll see as I go, I'm always rotating the cup as the glitter is falling. And that prevents those like just dumps of straight color that you sometimes have when you're doing an ombre. And finally, for our white, we are going to use Parabatai. Not chunky Parabatai, just regular. Now with Parabatai, because it's our lightest color, I'm gonna go a little bit heavier than I did with all of the other chunky cuts because I really wanna build up that coverage 
as much as I can before I go in with the fine cut of the silver. Because I don't want that white to get too contaminated with other colors. So you can see the difference in heavy coverage that I have with the white versus all the other colors. Okay, so now that all of our chunky glitters have been applied, we're gonna go back through and apply all of the fine cuts and really start to build up a super nice blend between all of the colors. So for black, we're using Batman. I'm gonna fully cover the bottom. Now, if you don't wanna do your peekaboo on the bottom, like if you don't wanna do any peekaboo decals down there, you don't even have to paint or glitter or finish your bottom at all. You can just paint it when you do the peekaboo and have it be that way. But I always like to do a little bit of a peekaboo on the bottom. So I'm gonna glitter it the same as all the other ones. Now again, with the black, because it's the darkest, I'm gonna go really light in my coverage. Again, holding my shaker really, really high, constantly keeping my cup moving. And I'm aiming for the glitter to go towards the end so that when it falls, it's gonna just gently fall into that brown section. There's what we've got for our black blend. For our brown fine cut, we're gonna use French press. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna kind of fade it this way. But now that we're not on the bottom of the cup, we're also going to fade it down into the black and we're gonna do the same thing with all the colors. So we're gonna fade both ways so that everything is really nice and blended. Now blending your brown into your black will be really easy because they're both dark and they'll blend really nicely. Just be careful as you work up into that lighter bronze color, you don't want too much brown to get up there just yet. So there's where we're at with that. For our bronze fine cut, we're using clock tower. And I'm gonna start by blending down into the brown because now as we go with our heavier coverage, these spots are mostly covered with glitter. So you can go a little bit more heavy handed over the spots that you've already glittered because you're not gonna have those big empty patches where that glitter is gonna stick. It's just gonna form a really, really nice blend and fade. So you can see I'm going a little bit more heavy, still keeping my cup constantly moving. And then going up into the gold, we're gonna lighten up our hand once again. Really gentle shakes here. We're gonna use Goddess as our fine cut gold. It's the smaller cut of Athena. Same thing, we're going heavy handed down into the bronze and darker sections, always keeping my cup moving. And then we're gonna lighten up as we get up into the silver. We're using a 357 Magnum for the fine cut silver. Again, going heavy handed down the cup and then really lightening up as much as we can as we get into the white. I didn't do a great job blending into the white, but that's okay. <laughs> now, before I add my fine cut white, I'm gonna aggressively tap off all of this excess glitter so that we don't contaminate our white. All right, we're going to use flurries for our fine cut white. And I'm again gonna go really heavy up here on this top rim and then fade it down into the silver. Now, if there are any areas where you wanna go back in and blend more, there's a couple on mine that I can see. I might grab an extra fine cut to help blend those. Okay, so for our brown, we're going to use Espresso, which is the, ex the extra fine cut. And I'm just gonna put that exactly in the same places I put French Press and Venti, just to help build the blend a little bit more between the brown and the bronze and black. I'm going pretty light here because this is a dark color. I don't want it to be splotchy. And then for the bronze, I'm using It's Pecan for our extra fine cut. And again, doing the exact same thing. I'm just building up that coverage down, building up the blend down, up into the gold, going really light, just blending the best I can. 
Now, if you don't get this blend perfect, that's okay because this is our peekaboo layer. So you're going to see your blend in certain places, but when you go to place your decals, you can kind of be strategic in where you place them. Like if there's a spot on your cup that you just like did not blend well, just don't put a decal there and it'll get covered up with paint and you'll never know. To build up the white coverage a little bit, I'm gonna take Bright, which is an extra fine white kind of holographic-y color. And I'm just gonna build up that white coverage and go really hard into the silver as well. Just to get that blended a little better. I'm gonna go in with one more round of Goddess first on our gold section before I add our extra fine silver, just to make sure that that gold area is really well defined. So again, going heavy down the cup because we've got a lot of coverage there already. And then just going pretty light up into the silver. Okay, and finally, we're going to use Colt, which is the extra fine silver cut. I'm gonna go down into the gold and then light, light, light up into the white. It's kind of like a little snowfall of silver. So there's what our ombre looks like for the first round. It's going to be very hard for me to cover this up with a peekaboo. <laughs> but there's what we've got so far. I'm gonna let this dry for about hmm, probably I'll probably, to be honest, let it dry overnight, and then we'll come back and seal it and do our first coats of epoxy. So once the glitter was all dry, I sealed the cup with two coats of clear gloss spray from Rust-Oleum, and then I added two coats of epoxy. Each coat of epoxy was about 30 milliliters, and now we're ready to go in and do all of our sanding and make sure that our cup is as smooth as possible before we place our peekaboo decals. So I'm going to go through first and clean up the rim, and then I'm going to take my electric sander and just really like sand the heck out of my cup. I want to make sure that it is as smooth as possible. Now, because we're going to do another layer of glitter on top, it doesn't really need to be like perfectly smooth. You would need to sand a little bit more if you were going to do just a plain like spray paint peekaboo over this, which you can if you are more comfortable doing that. It will probably look just as beautiful. So just keep in mind if you're going to do just plain spray paint, make sure your cup is super smooth. So now that my cup is smooth and has been washed, I'm going to just go through and place my my leopard spots. I'm doing them one by one. If you feel more comfortable just placing the pattern down um, as is, you totally can do that. I just prefer to place them by hand. I like to kind of create my own pattern um, and fill up the space as I like to. So I'm going to go through and just fill up the entire cup with leopard spots and then we will go through and paint our peekaboo. Okay, all of our leopard print stencil decals have been applied and now we're ready to spray paint. So remember when we paint, we're going to reverse the order. So we're gonna start with the black at the top and then work our way down, just like you can see here. Okay, so our spray paint here is dry now over our stencils. And to help me in finding these after we apply our reverse glitter ombre, I'm going to use my hot glue gun and a paint marker to darken up the spots, kind of make them stand out a little bit. And with the hot glue gun, we're gonna kind of raise up the spots to help us find them underneath the glitter a little bit easier. So to start, while my glue gun is heating up, I'm going to take a Sharpie and just make a mark on the spot so that it stands out a little bit more. You can see it's a lot easier to see with the black mark on it versus just by itself. So I'm gonna go through quickly and just kind of draw around the spots like that. I kind of like to outline them so that if I can see any part of that dark around the spot, I know what kind of spot it is and like where to put my picker tool, if that makes sense. Okay, now with my heat gun, I'm going to especially concentrate on 
these spots where the black glitter is going to go because it's going to be really hard to find them underneath the black. So I'm going to go and I'm kind of doing the same thing that I did with the Sharpie. I'm kind of tracing the spot a little bit if you can see there just to give me multiple points of reference for like where the spot goes to help me peel it up. I'm just being really careful not to get any of like this glue stringy stuff all over my cup. I'm trying to be as clean as possible when I place these dots. To apply our glitter on our second layer, we are gonna use the epoxy method. So I'm gonna mix up five milliliters of my Flynn Sisters Artist Cure Epoxy. I'm using the epoxy method. Well, I guess I'm gonna do 10 milliliters. I'm using the epoxy method because I like the long working time, especially when you're putting on a lot of glitter. I think it's just easier to use the epoxy method. It's totally up to you. Whatever you're comfortable working with as far as like an adhesive goes, go for it. So once my epoxy is mixed, I'm just going to apply it to my cup here. I again want a really thin layer of epoxy on my tumbler. I don't want to have too much epoxy on and then it, that'll just make it harder to pull up the decals. So I'm just going to do a nice thin coat of this on here. Make sure it's all evenly spread. So that's what our cup looks like. We are ready to apply our glitter. Now the glitters we are using are gonna be the exact same ones that we used when we first glittered the cup on our first layer. We're just gonna do it the opposite way. So we're gonna start with the black at the top and then work our way down to the white on the bottom. The process is exactly the same. So I'm gonna kind of speed through this glittering process, but you'll do exactly the same thing that we did on the first layer, just on the top. Uh, and then we will peel the decals right away. So let's go. We are going to peel our decals up right away. I don't want the epoxy to cure with the decals on because that will make it pretty much impossible to peel them up. So we're gonna go right in right away. I'm gonna use my pin pen to pick these up. And I find that when I use this, I can kind of just like pull the decal up versus having to like get in there and like weed it out. So I'm going to just find the point on the decal and then kind of just pull my pen up. I'm gonna put a glove on actually so I can get in there with my hands. So once I've got it pulled up, I'm just gonna pull that way. So I'm gonna move you to the top down and we are going to peel these babies up as fast as we can. Now that you're looking up close, you can really see how the hot glue dots really help you find these stencils underneath the glitter. Had I not done these glue dots, I would have been completely lost and I would have had no idea where these decals were. I would have just had to like poke around until I 
felt something that might have felt like stencil vinyl. So I highly, highly, highly recommend the glue dots. Um, the dark marks that I made with the Sharpie didn't really make a huge difference under the glitter, but I do recommend doing that if you're just going to do plain spray paint because it will really help you find those decals underneath your paint. And then you probably won't have to do the hot glue dots. You'll be able to just see them. But if you're glittering over your peekaboo, definitely do the hot glue little trick here. So I'm going to continue peeling all of these up and then I'm going to let the epoxy sit and cure for, I think I let it sit for about four maybe to six hours. And then I'm going to spray seal it again with two coats of the clear gloss spray from Rust-Oleum. And now I'm going to add an additional two coats of epoxy over my glitter, just like we did in the beginning. Each coat was about like 20 to 30 milliliters. And I'm using the Flint Sisters Supply Shop Fast Cure Epoxy. So in between my coats, I waited about two to three hours. If you're using a regular setting epoxy, you'll want to wait at least four to six hours in between coats. After the second coat of epoxy over your glitter peekaboo has cured, you're going to go in and do another full round of sanding. We're going to add our outlines now, so we want to make sure that our cup is totally smooth underneath that vinyl. We don't want any bumps or anything showing underneath our vinyl outlines. I went back and forth on what color vinyl to do for my outlines. Initially, I thought I would match the ombre with my vinyl. I tried that. It didn't look good. Then I thought maybe black. And then I asked a couple friends of mine, Rachel and Jamie, and they said that I should try like an ivory and maybe the champagne gold textured metallic, my tried and true vinyl. So I ended up trying that and I really, really liked how it looked. So always ask your friends for help if you don't know what the heck to do. <laughs> now, if you want to skip the outlining, you totally can. Um, I'll show you at the end. I did this cup in a neon color palette and I did not outline the spot so you can kind of see what it looks like with the outline and without. Um, I'll show you that at the end. But for this one, I decided that I wanted to do the outlines because in the middle of the cup where the kind of gold and bronze peekaboo was happening. It was really hard to define those spots just looking at it with the plain glitter. So I decided on this one I would outline and I just cut out my regular leopard peekaboo file that I made an offset of and I made the offset 0 0.040 and once the offset was there I highlighted the original file and the offset and then I basically just sliced out the leopard print file from the offset. I will, if you want me to, do a dedicated video showing you how to create outlines. I've shown it in a few videos in the past, but I do get a lot of questions about it. I didn't want to include it in this tutorial because this is already a very long video, so if you would like a separate little quick bonus video showing you how to create outlines, let me know down below in the comments and I will definitely do that for you. So I added a few of the ivory outlines first and then I went in with the champagne gold and added those afterwards. I just tried to make sure there was kind of an even number of each color, made sure they were distributed in a way that I thought looked good. But again, you can do whatever color palette you want. You can do a totally different color. You can do all the same color. You can mix and match colors. Do whatever you want. It'll look good in the end, I promise. One other thing I also did was on a few of the spots that I missed in the peekaboo, like there were a few spots where I only peeled up like half the stencil because I couldn't really see where it was. Um, I'm just going to take a regular cutout leopard spot from my outline in that champagne gold textured metallic vinyl and I'm going to lay it right over the peekaboo because if we put an outline there, it would have just looked silly. So I had a few of those on the cup that are just randomly scattered. Um, but once I did that, I sealed my vinyl with some polycrylic, added my final coat of epoxy, and we are all done. So here is the final result all complete. I absolutely love how this design came out. I am so obsessed with this technique. I cannot wait to do it again. I've got a couple ideas with it too coming up, so stay tuned to my channel. Here is the neon version that I told you about that does not have the outlines on it. So you can see either way, this design is totally just all the glitter. I love it so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit the thumbs up button down below. Let me know what you think down below in the comments and I will see you in my next video. Okay. Love you. Bye. Mm. Mm.
into this right here. We're gonna make a d d d <laughs> Jesus, Mary and Joseph Mallory, get it together. Little ombre, peekaboo, <laughs> reverse, back it up. Help me. Please help me. 